So what do you live for? Is it for money? Is it for uh, pleasing other people? Is it for your job? Is it for doing ministry just for the sake of doing ministry? Is it success? Uh, is it academic pursuits? Uh, what is it? Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer gives a, if I pronounce the name right, gives a really good quote um, about success and um, kind of where it should lie. And uh, he says, the figure of the, of the crucified invalidates all thought which takes success for its standard. It is very countercultural to say that success is not the standard by which we live. Um, for example, like people look like famous people who have pursued success and found it to be empty, like Kurt Cobain, and like Jimi Hendrix, Elvis. Those are some pop culture examples. Um, there was another man who had it all. He had tons of women. Um, tons of money, he was super wealthy, um, he had a good career, he had knowledge, he had everything. Um, but in the end, he said it wasn't worth it, and that's Solomon. And in Ecclesiastes 1, verses 12 through 14, he says, um, he says, well, I'll just read verse 14, he says, I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and the striving after wind. So it's like reaching after something that you can't grab. Success just doesn't get you anywhere. Um, it's not the end. Um, so what are we supposed to do in light of that? If it's not all it's uh, portrayed to be, what, are, what do we do about that? Um, so I would make three propositions. One is that we should live for Christ, not for the world. Two is that we should uh, have a healthy desire to be with Christ. And three we should live for Christ by serving others. So if you guys could open up to Philippians uh, chapter 1, verses 18 through 26. Okay, so he starts out um, after he's done talking about his imprisonment and how he rejoices that the gospel can be uh, proclaimed regardless of intent. Uh, he says, Yes, I will rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, meaning his imprisonment. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which shall I choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you, with you all, for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Uh, so before we take a look at this passage more in depth, we need to ask ourselves the question, is, is living for Christ really worth it? Like, is it important? Is it worth pursuing? Um, there's kind of two ways we can look at that question. We can look at it from personal experience and see if other things are worth living for. And then we can look at what Paul says. Um, so I know for me, um, I'm an introvert, and so living... I like to live for myself. I like to be secluded. I like to back away from other people. And it it's just not always satisfying. It's, it, even as an introvert, it's lonely. And it's not, it's not always, uh, doesn't, it's not all it's chalked out to be. Um, there are other things like, I mean, this is stupid, but video games, I mean, they're fun, but you get bored of them quick. They, like, it lasts for a while, but then it just goes. Um, living for Christ is worth it. Um, that is one thing that we're promised over and over again in Scripture uh, that will not um, diminish and that will bring satisfaction. Um, so if we're looking at then Paul's example, he was in prison, so he, he wasn't sure what his fate was going to be. He wasn't certain whether he was going to die or whether he was going to live. And in light of that, he had every reason to be anxious 
and was likely looking back on his life and reflecting on what his life was all about. And the only thing he has to say in reflecting on his life is that to live is Christ. And that's in verse uh, 21. He says, to live for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Uh, so we will not be satisfied um, simply by pursuing ministry for the sake of ministry. Um, I'm going to kind of get a little bit more into what that exactly means later. Um, we will not be satisfied by, just by pursuing relationships with people. We will not be satisfied by getting good grades, at least not for long. And so uh, what does it mean to live for Christ? In the preceding verse, uh, verse 20, he says, uh, As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now as always, will be honored, Christ as always, as always, Christ will be honored in my body. Uh, other translations, honored is exchanged with exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. So his life, his life and his death are, uh, the epitome of that is defined in uh, Christ being exalted, Christ being honored through him. Um, so that's what it means briefly to live for Christ. Um, that kind of leads into my second point in verse 21 where he moves on to uh, dying being a gain. Uh, we must ask the same question that we ask of if living for Christ is worth it. We must ask that same question, is dying for really a gain? How can those two things be both good? Um, so I think something that's really important is that Paul believed dying was a gain. Um, if we read verses 22 and 23, um, Paul is debating about whether or not, about what he wants. Um, he says, if I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yeah, which shall I choose? I cannot tell. So he's not really sure. Um, but then in two verses, 23 and 24, he makes that decision pretty quickly. He says, I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. So that's, that's what he views as better, is being with Christ. But he also says it's necessary, uh, more necessary to remain with the Philippians. Um, so I'm, I'm getting married in June, if you guys didn't know that. But, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Nice. So uh, I would much rather be married to my wife, my future wife, than be stuck in the engagement phase forever. I'm sure you engaged and married guys know it's not, like it's fun, but it's not. Not all up here. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, married life with her is going to be much better than it is now, separate from her. And if I was looking forward to my marriage, or was not looking forward to my marriage and being with her, then you guys would question my motives. Um, and similarly, with, with Christ, if we aren't um, desiring to be with Christ, and desiring to depart and be with Christ, then we really need to question why why we're a Christian um, if we don't actually want to be with Him. Are we going through all the work if we don't desire in the end to be with Christ? Um, so some people take this too far in both directions, uh, desiring to be with Christ, and uh, they'll think it they'll like pursue martyrdom or pursue uh, like I don't know. Some people could use it as an excuse to do suicide or other things like that so just so they can be with Christ and avoid the work. But we also need to avoid the other extreme because that one obviously isn't correct and we can't be afraid of death. Um, we should be excited for it because we do get to be with Christ and that's exciting. Um, but we have work we need to do here so that others can enjoy that same So that others can enjoy that same view of death as we do, so we can be excited to be with Christ rather than fear death. Um, so Paul understood this. Um, Acts could have come down on him at any day. He had no idea what the state was going to be, and he really badly wanted to be with Christ. So he was probably awaiting the Acts and was wanting that. Um, he was patient, and he ended up deeming it necessary uh, to continue. To live for Christ, and uh, he does that by being with the Philippians, um, which leads me to my third point. Actually, I have another passage to read. 
Uh, so James 4, 13 through 15 sort of talks about just our lives and how brief they are and how we need to kind of have a view of eternity. Um, let's see. James 4, 13 through 15. Um, so he says, Come now, and you who say, uh, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade there and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. We're, our lives are brief, so we need to have eternity in mind and um, be awaiting Christ for the day that he comes for us and for the day that we go to him. Um, but if we are going to live, we need to do so by serving others, which is my third point. Um, so if Paul desired to die and be with Christ, then, but yet he deemed it more necessary to remain with the Philippians, then that must be pretty important to remain with the Philippians if he deemed it more necessary than being with Christ, like, physically. That's, like, it's pretty important if he thinks it's more important than being with Jesus. Uh, more necessary than being with Jesus. Um, so Paul's living for Christ hinged on um, remaining and continuing with the Philippians, as it says in verse, the next verse, which is So convinced of this, uh, he says, I, I know that I will remain and continue with you, with you all, for your progress and joy in the faith. Um, so if we're going to live for Christ, um, we must do so by serving others and seeking to increase their boasting in Christ. Um, he talks about that in verse uh, 26, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ. In other translations it says boast. Um, because of my coming to you again. So his whole living for Christ is dependent on um, continuing and uh, in increasing the joy in the faith with the Philippians. Um, and so Paul was released. He was not going to go out and use his uh, life for Christ by climbing up an ivory tower and spending his time up there studying his, with his nose in a book. He was going to dedicate everything of his life to, con to remaining and continuing in his ministry of the Philippians. Um, and Christ poured himself out for us. So if we are going to live for Christ, we must seek to mirror him and pour ourselves out for others. Uh, Philippians 2, 6-7 uh, says that, Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, uh, being born in the likeness of a man. So he made himself nothing, he poured himself out, he set aside everything he was um, to uh, save us. And similarly, we must pour ourselves out and um, continue in our ministries with people if we're going to live. Um, so it is only through this, through uh, living for Christ, that both life and death can become positives. It's kind of interesting. Uh, life and death are just, to most people, are opposites. Um, life cannot be good, or life cannot be good if death is bad, and uh, sorry, that's not making sense. If They just seem to contradict, so they both can't be good, and they both can't be bad uh, to most people. Um, Philippians viewed death very seriously, and uh, Paul's attitude was kind of lighthearted towards it. Um, so he, it was kind of contradictory to what they were used to. They were used to death being just kind of flippantly mentioned like it is in uh, this passage. Um, so it was kind of uh, interesting to them, and uh, it is only through living for Christ that life and death are reconciled and that they're both made positives. If we look at something like success, for instance, if we live for success and then we die, we lose our success and it's gone. If we live for money and we die, 